Hi, my name is Jeff Galvin. I'm the CEO of American Gene Technologies. So today I'm going to be making some forward looking statements. This is just the normal legal disclaimers uh, that there may be some information in here and that this is not a solicitation for investment. So the big news this year from American Gene Technologies is that the FDA has approved us for a human trial, a phase one of our HIV cure cell therapy. And uh, this has been something we've been working towards for quite a long time. And we got the approval in August and we had uh, been processing a lot of stuff in uh, parallel with this. So we already had three trial sites set up around uh, the Washington DC and Baltimore area. And we expect to enroll our first patient in early October. Uh, the process, if you don't remember from last year, is that it's an autologous cell therapy where we are taking a Leuka pack with T cells in it. We're isolating the HIV T cells and we're modifying them to be immune to HIV. The main reason why HIV is able to get into the human body and take over the immune system is that the sentinel T cells, the CD4 positive T cells, that are your initial uh, detection and protection against viruses. Well, the HIV viron has developed the ability to infect those T cells. And in fact, the first T cells that get infected in a victim's body, in a uh, infected person's body, are the HIV specific CD4 positive T cells. So the sentinel T cells that are supposed to protect you from the infection actually become the beachhead of the infection. They are converted into viral factories and uh, those T cells are utilized to, as a stepping off point to start infecting all of the CD4 T cells in your body. You may also know that the CD4 positive T cells are the conductors of the orchestra when it comes to the immune cascade that uh, comes from detecting a pathogen in your body. So once the CD4 positive T cells are no longer there, you have no protection against the pathogen, in this case, HIV. So what do we do? First thing we do is we take a 400 milliliter Leuka pack from the HIV infected individual. Now they need to be well controlled on antiretroviral therapy that takes about one to three years. So we expect that somebody that is newly infected with HIV would go on antiretroviral therapy for between one and three years, and then they would have enough HIV specific T cells in their body that a 400 milliliter Leuka pack would give us enough to do this cure process. The next step is that we isolate the HIV T cells, we stimulate them and then modify them with a proprietary lentiviral vector that strips the CCR5, that's the um, entry point for R5 strains of HIV, and also puts siRNAs against conserved regions of other known clades of HIV. So this protection is quite broad. You may be familiar with the Berlin patient uh, or the London patient where they got a bone marrow transplant that left them CCR5 negative. That is good protection against R5 strains of the virus, but we've added uh, additional protection by putting siRNAs inside the cell, uh, a gene that uh, creates those siRNAs from a microRNA scaffolding and they will have the effect of preventing infection or shutting off an infection in pre-infected cells uh, for not just the R5 strains, but X4 tropic strains as well. Uh, after we have protected the HIV specific T cells, we culture them up until we have approximately a billion of those cells. Once we have those cells, it goes through a release testing, of course, uh, the initial study that we're doing has quite a long release testing, but we expect that the release testing will be just a few weeks after uh, the automated cell process that uh, creates the protected cells takes about 11 days. So vein to vein, this should be about a month. And then finally, uh, there is a reinfusion protocol. Uh, there's a, a minor cytotoxic treatment to create some additional room for the T cells. Uh, but it's not myeloablative. It's not a, uh, the type of uh, cytotoxic treatment that you need be, uh, before a CAR-T treatment or something like that. It's fairly mild. 
Uh, everything in here is done on an outpatient basis. So the leukophoresis, the patient comes in, they are leukophoresed, go home. Uh, the automated cell process is in a benchtop unit. It's currently run on a Milteni Prodigy. This could go into any hospital anywhere in the world. It's a relatively inexpensive piece of equipment and doesn't require a clean room. The reagents uh, like the lentiviral vector and peptide mix and some other uh, reagents that are part of the process will be the consumables. And uh, the uh, process is fairly well automated. It would just require a trained operator to run it. And um, everything is just done over 11 days inside that machine. GMP is inside the bag. And uh, then the final product uh, would be tested. And if the, the testing reveals that the product is successful, then the uh, patient would be brought back into the clinic for the cytotoxic treatment. Uh, they would go home again, and then would, they would be brought back one final time for a standard reinfusion. Now, why do we think this might work? Uh, as a matter of fact, why are we actually optimistic and relatively confident that it could work? Well, first of all, it's because we have a dream team of HIV uh, scientists and clinicians associated with the project. And the uh, uh, people that are in the project include our own internal PhDs. Uh, David Pausa, who you may be familiar with if you are in the HIV uh, community of researchers and clinicians. Uh, he has been researching uh, HIV for over 35 years now, and he is our CSO and uh, he's pulled together a terrific internal team of PhDs with vast experience in gene and cell therapy and HIV uh, immunology and virology. But on top of that, we've attracted some really tremendous people from the community. Uh, Sean Cotillil is well known in infectious disease. Uh, he is doing the study up at the Institute of Human Virology in Baltimore. Uh, we also have David Hardy, you may remember him from Calimune, also an experienced person with HIV and HIV cure attempts, and Ellie Benham, who was the CMO for Syngamo, uh, who also had a very important study uh, in HIV cure uh, that I'm going to talk about in a moment. And finally, uh, we're also quite proud that John Rossi from City of Hope in Duarte, California is on the Scientific Advisory Board. Well, uh, as you might imagine, we had to gather a lot of data to create the investigational new drug document. And in gathering that data, we actually ran the blood from over a dozen uh, HIV infected individuals through the automated cell process. And we were able to test that blood product in vitro uh, after that process. And the ability of those cells to clear HIV in latently infected cells was tremendous. We showed that data to uh, NIAD, the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Disease, and they were quite impressed. As a matter of fact, they immediately asked us for a collaborative research agreement uh, so that they could repeat the process in their own labs and of course, we were very excited to have them validate our preclinical data. Well, they did repeat it, and they got the exact same data as we did. And so they uh, co-authored an article with us, which has been published in Molecular Therapy, which reviews the development of the cell process and also the data that we were able to record in terms of how the cells are able to hold up to HIV challenge, and that includes virus and also latently infected cells. I think if you read that article, if you are uh, a, uh, somebody with a background in immunology, virology, or uh, HIV, uh, you will be quite impressed and you can do the math off of that. We actually think that the potency of this product may be three to five times uh, what is necessary to, to naturally suppress the virus in the patient's body once the cells are returned to them. So what are we essentially doing? Well, we're pulling out a very small number of HIV and, uh, T cells from the patient's body. As a matter of fact, we think we get about a million 
uh, cells in the initial leukapheresis. Now, over the 11 days when we're processing them in the automated cell processing and modifying them with a lentiviral vector, we are actually ending up with a billion of these T cells, these HIV specific CD4 uh, T cells, and they are 95% of them have been transduced by our lentiviral vector and are immune to HIV. Well, this tips the immune um, equation greatly in favor of the immune system instead of the virus. And we think that, as I said earlier, this is about, uh, if you look at a billion cells, uh, that's probably about 10 times as many as is necessary to naturally suppress the virus without antiretroviral therapy being necessary any longer. However, during the reinfusion process, it is normal that you lose a portion of those. We think what will be left over will be somewhere between three and five times the necessary cells. As I mentioned earlier, there has been a study uh, by Sangamo where they use zinc finger nu nuclease to clip the CCR5 gene in a study that was relatively similar to what we're doing. Now, the difference is, is when you do a zinc finger nu nuclease clipping, you actually have to get both of the alleles in each cell in order to get rid of enough CCR5 to make that cell uh, immune to R5 viruses. Um, so we're using a lentiviral vector to install a microRNA scaffolded siRNA against CCR5. So we're actually getting 100% of the cells. They were getting about 10% of the cells. That really makes a big difference. The other thing is, is we're putting in other siRNAs so that our protection is actually uh, valuable and effective against X4 tropic versions of HIV as well. Uh, I think it's very important to compare what the results are. If you look at our billion cells, it turns out that's 2,000 times the number of HIV-specific uh, CD4 positive T cells that Syngamo was able to return to the patient. And um, that is uh, quite exciting when you think about the fact that Syngamo actually got about a 10% durable remission they had to use uh, patients that were uh, heterozygous delta 32 mutants. That just means that it wouldn't work on all patients. Uh, you had to have a special genetic condition. But ours will actually return those billion cells regardless of the genetic background of the patient. So the AGT approach should be uh, much more likely to hit a therapeutic level and we hope that we'll cross the threshold of functional cure. Uh, they did get a durable remission in 10% of their patients with one two thousandth the, the amount of protection. So um, I think when you look at those ratios, uh, you may start to feel as we do that it is quite possible that we will get durable remission in a large percentage of the patients uh, that are treated with this cell process. So what's the schedule coming up? Uh, the, the trial will kick off in October. And so we will recruit our first patient in early October. And we think that around January, we will have reinfused a patient and we will have initial safety data. Uh, we are gonna do secondary markers of efficacy and uh, provided that those secondary markers where we're measuring the activity of the T cells that we put into the body and the response of the entire immune system, we are hoping that we will have efficacy signal by next summer. Now, uh, one of the things in this uh, first phase one study is we wanted to make sure it was as safe as possible for the patients. So we're not requiring a treatment interruption. And um, as a result, uh, we will probably, after we are able to confirm safety, re-enroll those patients into a phase 1B. We'll have them go off their antiretroviral therapy and our expectation, or let's say our hopes are, that the virus will be naturally suppressed 
and they will no longer need the antiretroviral therapy to number one, control the viremia and prevent AIDS. Number two, keep them suppressed sufficiently that they cannot infect others. And then three, we expect that this T cell protection will be durable for life. This would mean that they would be permanently immune uh, against reinfection of HIV. And as I was mentioning earlier, this would be not only the most common strains of R5 virus, but also X4 tropic viruses. So we have other things in our pipeline, and uh, one of them is a cure for phenylketonuria, and we also have some very interesting immuno-oncology assets. No time to go over those today, but thank you for listening in, and hopefully we'll have a lot of news over the next nine months about a potential HIV functional cure. Thank you.